Hi, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, so I'd like to just thank Cody and John for setting up these seminars and for giving me a chance to speak. So this uh, work um, on non susie strings uh, is in collaboration with uh, Alan uh, Faraji and uh, Victor Matias. So just as an overview, um, I'd like to just present where this sort of fits in with the broader, um, broader work in string theory as a whole. So there's, uh, we'll be looking at models descending from two different um, origins. So first of all, we'll look at models um, descending from a O16 cross O16 tachyon free heterotic string in 10 dimensions. So these are more well explored in the literature. Um, and then via a Z2 cross Z2 orbifold, we'll look at um, SO10 uh, models in four dimensions, which are tachyon free. Um, and we'll call these um, S models. Just um, we'll explain the uh, terminology um, in a couple of slides. Uh, and then from, from these S models, we'll look at a phenomenological classification along the lines of which has been done for supersymmetric model, um, but in this, uh, this non-supersymmetric um, setup. Um, and then more uh, sort of less well explored are models descending from the tachyonic 10 dimensional heterotic string. Um, and again, we'll look at Z2 cross Z2 orbifoldings of this uh, tachyonic string um, and then consider four dimensional configurations um, in which uh, the tachyons are projected. Um, and we'll do a similar classification. So um, in both cases, we find another interesting um, group of string theories, which are the type zero and type zero bar. So we'll, we'll define these. So these are models free of massless um, fermions and um, twisted massless bosons, respectively. Um, and we find these interesting um, configurations in both, both setups. So just to make a connection with the, the literature, so the tachyonic 10 dimensional heterotic strings, um, th these have been found since the, were found in the 80s by um, uh, Dixon and Harvey, Seiberg and Witten, and type zero string in 10 dimensions uh, also appear in the literature and I'll give some references in the, so there's a fairly long bibliography at the end, but I'll give kind of archive references for important papers um, for what I'll be saying um, in the slides as well. Okay, so this is the sort of wider picture. Um, but uh, first of all, so the outline of this talk will start with uh, defining the formulation we're working in, which is the free fermionic uh, formulation of the heterotic string. And then we'll see how the heterotic strings in 10 dimensions can be formulated within this formalism. Um, and then we'll look at the four dimensional models for both these S and S tilde cases we, we mentioned. And then we'll consider looking at the partition function and cosmological constant. Um, analysis for these um, for these models, and then finally we'll just mention these um, these cases are uh, type zero and type zero bar configurations at the end. Okay, so the free fermionic construction is a is a world uh, world sheet con uh, CFT construction, um, and these are uh, uh, models are defined directly in four dimensions at. Um, the uh, uh, free fermionic point, um, self-dual point in the moduli space. So in 10 dimensions, um, the theory can be written with uh, the extra degrees of freedom uh, in, in, in written in this notation where uh, everything is fermionized um, and in particular these um, gauge degrees of freedom uh, from the anti-holomorphic side can be written as uh, 16 uh, complex fermions um, where the a rank eight uh, observable uh, gauge group is generated um, by the psi bar and eta bar. So importantly, we'll be using the psi bar one to five to generate the, these will relate to the SO10 uh, gut, and then these red um, phi bars will generate a hidden uh, gauge group factor. Um, and then if you then try and do the, the same uh, construction in four dimensions, you'll have uh, additional degrees of freedom um, which we write in this fermionic language with um, Ys and Ws, um, which essentially are just the fermionized parameters of the internal six-dimensional torus connecting to the bosonic language via this, um, this equation. 
Um, in order to start model building, we have um, two essential, essential ing ingredients. So um, in order to build one loop partition functions, which is sort of sufficient for, for um, all consistency constraints, um, we have to define firstly a set of basis vectors. So we have uh, n basis vectors where um, inside the basis vector, we just define the boundary conditions of those um, the fermions, the free fermions that we have, which propagate around the string world sheet. And we assign them either typically NS or R boundary conditions. And the convention is that if it's uh, Ramond, we write the fermion explicitly. Um, whereas if it's NS, we just uh, omit it and leave it implicit. Okay, so with these basis vectors, uh, we can then assign some uh, GSO phases between them. Um, so there is uh, essentially an N by N matrix of these um, and they can take uh, real values plus or minus one typically, or in, in some cases plus or minus I. Um, but uh, there's always these two values and the upper triangle is the only independent uh, coefficients where the others are just fixed by modular invariants. So with those two ingredients, we can then look at uh, deriving the Hilbert space of a model, which essentially just means um, doing the GSO projections on all sectors. So sectors are just the linear combinations of these basis vectors. Um, so the basis vectors will span some sort of additive group or um, just yeah, some additive group uh, psi. And then the, the states in the Hilbert space uh, derived from the sectors are just those that, that survive after all of these GSO projections. Um, and a sector will be characterized by its right and left masses. Um, and there is some dot product here, which essentially just counts the number of Ramond um, uh, fermions on each side of the sector, um, and then some oscillator contribution. So now we're ready to start sort of building, um, building models. Um, so let's look at the 10D heterotic string and how it'd be written in this formulation. Right, so the E8 cross E8, the familiar E8 cross E8, and the O16 cross O16, um, heterotic models will be written with a common set of basis vectors. So this isn't a unique choice, but uh, it works. And um, you always in the free fermionic language will require this uh, one basis vector. And then there's we add these two um, groups of eight uh, right moving uh, fermions, which relate to the observable and the hidden. So these, the, these um, will generate the E8 cross E8 and O16 depending on this choice of phase, so GSO phase between Z1 and Z2. Uh, in both of these cases, the SUSY generator um, is, this, is this vector combination, um, where this is, this is an important vector because in this language, what it does is if you add it to a sector, it will just map you from fermions to bosons without affecting the, the rest of the charges under the gauge groups. So uh, you can always generate super sort of super partner sectors uh, using this S vector. Okay, so now we want to think about where does that tachyonic string I mentioned uh, come in. So one way to generate the tachyonic heterotic string in this language would be to implement this map, which ensures that we take S out of the basis, um, sorry, out of the additive group. And instead we have this S tilde, which is just S um, with some augmentation of four right moving fermions and we choose these this is a convenient choice to choose four of the uh, hidden um, hidden um, complex fermions then uh, for example if we took a simple model where one and s tilde we could relate this um, so the untwisted gauge group of this um, of a model with this basis would um, be, be uh, 08 cross 024 which is a a tachyonic heterotic string um, already found by Dixon and Harvey in the 80s. Um, so this model in particular, the tachyons will come from this untwisted um, type of state where these uh, complex fermions we added um, to S tilde can, can be right moving oscillators. Uh, and these will always, regardless of the GSO projections, uh, be, in our, uh, be, be in this model. However, this is, uh, so a tachyon only indicates the, an instability in the Minkowski 10-dimensional background. 
So if we can look in lower dimensions, in particular in four dimensions, and find tachyon-free configurations, then it seems reasonable to suggest that these um, ten-dimensional tachyonic strings can be viable starting points for phenomenology. So in particular, to sort of justify this, um, in this paper from last year, we looked at a model where, um, so this model from 2008, which was super symmetric, we just applied this map of S to S tilde and found that we preserved the key features of the phenomenology. So um, the fact that it was three generations had the right Higgs content, but also the fact that it was tachyon free, but most importantly. Um, furthermore, in the supersymmetric model from this paper, it was argued that uh, the um, untwisted moduli, which in the free fermionic language will be generated by um, these products of Turing um, interactions. So these uh, Ys and Ws we mentioned that parameterize the internal torus um, can be all projected from the, the spectrum by a choice of asymmetric boundary conditions for these um, internal degrees of freedom. So this would correspond to some non-geometric orbifold. So in this in this case, we 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 are. It was argued that these um, these moduli were projected, and similarly, the twisted moduli were fixed in this supersymmetric model by the absence. Uh, looking at the F and D constraints, it was it was found that there was an absence of exact supersymmetric flat directions, and the the argument we we used was that the S tilde map uh, does not uh, affect this internal space, so it does not affect um, this argument about the projection of the moduli. Um, okay, so in particular, let's just uh, for completeness um, display what this model looked like. So the basis vectors, um, just a couple of key points were that we obviously have this S tilde in the basis, um, but also this uh, the asymmetric pairings of the internal degrees of freedom was implemented by these, these vectors here, written in blue. Um, and preserving the GSO phases just for the S tilde case um, allowed for the, this preservation of uh, key features. So it, it was argued that this, uh, although some of the arguments, particularly about the fixing of moduli, are, are difficult to uh, translate exactly into a non supersymmetric model, um, it at least justifies the further investigation uh, of models derived from the 10 dimensional tachyonic vacuum. Okay, so having hopefully justified that, we can then look at um, these S tilde models and S models in four dimensional SO10 um, cases where we, we try and do a broader classification analysis. So how we would do this is to write a generalized basis um, of this form for the S tilde models and a similar um, one for the S, S models. So this choice of base, this has been used many times before for um, supersymmetric classifications. Um, and then uh, it's, it's a very similar structure for the S tilde, except for these B1, B2, and B3 um, being fermionic um, and having an S tilde in the basis. But in, in, in general, that's, that's the only difference. And uh, we, we know that the untwisted gauge group for both of these, um, the, these uh, constructions will be um, will give us this SO10, but also uh, um, it will have very similar, it will just be different in this hidden group factor, uh, which is just related to the S tilde um, breaking the hidden group uh, more in this case than in this case, than in the S tilde, in the S case. Okay, and the, in terms of the SUSY breaking, there's a key difference in that um, the S tilde map explicitly breaks supersymmetry. Um, and in the S case, we can argue that there's um, spontaneous SUSY breaking happening. So SUSY is broken in this case just by the um, choice of GSO phases. So in particular, supersymmetric configuration could be it, it is where um, these phases S, E, I, S, Z1, S, Z2 are fixed to um, equal minus one. So this ensures that the gravitini are remain in the spectrum and um, a non-supersymmetric configuration will just be any configuration which this, where this condition doesn't hold. Um, whereas there's no such um, um, thing to worry about in the S tilde case where all of the choices of GSO phases will, 
generate explicitly broken uh, non-supersymmetric models. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to start doing the phenomenology would be to um, do a analysis of the tachyonic sectors. Um, so for both choices of basis, we have the same group of tachyonic sectors. Um, in particular, we write them in this notation where we have um, essentially all these combinations of EIs. So the EIs um, were just these Ys and W, um, which generate the um, internal space. So they, this is symmetric pairings of the internal coordinates. Um, so these can generate uh, tachyons. Um, and we have to project every possible um, state that can arise from these sectors. So the conditions on the projection were listed explicitly um, in this paper from June for SO10 and S tilde models, and uh, are written in this paper that uh, hopefully will be released next week for the S models. So even though the tachyonic sectors are the same in the two cases, the projections um, differ because uh, obviously you have um, S and S tilde will act differently um, in the GSO projections. Okay, so now uh, let's look at the structure of the massless, um, massless states. So because we are looking at SO10, we're interested in the 16s. Um, so for both cases, we have uh, these, these kind of groups of sectors, B1, B2, and B3. Um, which are very similar in the two cases. So the difference arises where in the S tilde case, um, we, if you were to add S tilde to, to these um, spinorial 16s, it would make their, it would make you, you, it would give you bosonic counterparts, but they would be massive. Um, however, in the S case, if you add on S, you get bosonic states which have the same, um, which have the same structure except for being bosonic. So. It, even though our models are non-supersymmetric, um, there's still the, the sectors still exist. It's just that the um, breaking of supersymmetry by GSO phases means that you just get mismatched charges, but the would-be um, sectors that give you the superpartners are are present. Uh, or, and, and and you just have to check case by case where, which ones survive. But there are no no such sort of bosonic counterparts in the S-tilde models. Um, so the vectorial tens, uh, the other representation we need to worry about. So um, because the the Higgs Higgs could come from this sector, and um, in the S tilde models we have a map which exists as this important combination, um, which takes us from the fermionic sixteen to the bosonic ten, um, and it's this combination of um, of complex fermions. Uh, which is S on the left, and then these uh, observable complex fermions on the right. And the map we, we get is just that there are these, this group of sectors that generate the 16, and this group that generate the, uh, the 10. However, in the S models, uh, this combination X um, can be added to the, the 16 to generate the 10, but you then have to act with S, and you sort of pick, get this sort of picture. Um, where the S maps you between the bosons and the fermions, and then the X maps you between the 16 and the 10. And this will have an important implication in a couple of slides for the, the possible sort of um, the possibility of having you know phenomenologically viable models. But first up, let's just um, build up some tools relating to the partition function and cosmological constant. Um, so the full partition function can be written in this uh, form uh, within the fermionic language. So there's the appearance of these GSO phases, the spin structures here, and um, then some integration over the fundamental domain, um, which can also be written as a Q expansion, so that the mass levels are explicitly, can be explicitly seen, M and M. And the key thing about this integral now when you evaluate it is that it's, 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 it diverges for on-shell tachyons, but it's finite for all other, um, for all other states. So the off-shell tachyons, the massive contributions all have to be evaluated. Um, and um, we are interested in, uh, so that there's an interesting configuration, which is the, um, where the number of massless uh, bosons and massless fermions is equal. 
So this is, uh, has been argued in cases with spontaneous supersymmetry breaking to be able to suppress exponentially the value of the cosmological constant because this, the NB minus NF uh, is sort of your leading uh, prefactor for, your, um, for the contributions to the cosmological constant. Um, and we found many con such configurations for our um, S tilde models within SO10, an unbroken SO10 framework in, in this paper from June. Uh, we also find um, such configurations for S models and S tilde models in the Patti Salam subgroup of SO10. So this is the, the, the current work. And um, we just now like will give you some statistics that we derived from, from this classification. So taking a sample of two times 10 to the nine um, possible GSO configurations, we found um, this many tachyon free, and then we implemented some standard um, SO10 uh, constraints for finding reasonable models. So uh, in particular, this constraint uh, on the number of 16s minus 16 bars is related to having three generations. A uh, number of 10s relates to having a, a possible Higgs. Um, and then we looked at this um, condition on the equality of bosonic and fermionic, the, the, the Bose-Fermi um, degeneracy. So we found th some 3,300 of these. Um, and then we looked at the distribution of this uh, NB minus NF at the massless level um, for a sample of um, some... First of all, we look, just, look, just looked at um, just tachyon-free models, gen general tachyon-free models. And then we looked at models where some of these, um, well, these uh, constraints um, on the SO10 phenomenology is, are implemented. And we noticed just a slight shift here to the negative. Similarly for the cosmological constant um, in, in the same kind of sample, so some non-tachyonic and some where these conditions are met. Okay, and then, and then we, we gave an example model where, where the GSO phases were given, given by this, just uh, included for, for, for completeness, but the um, classification numbers were, were these. So we had, we had seven um, 16s, one 16 bar. Um, we had um, some, some uh, 10 representations and the partition function took this form where we have this uh, leading, um, this first term here is uh, off-shell tachyonic contribution that's um, been known in the literature, the proto-graviton, which is, uh, always appears in these non-supersymmetric models, um, regardless of the construction. Um, so then we have zero constant term because um, we found MB equals NF at the massless level for this, this, this model. Um, and then we just write the massive level matched contributions but there are of course also off-shell contributions um, so then we then then the, co the cosmological constant can be calculated through the modular integral um, and this can this is connected to the space-time cosmological constant uh, via these um, these sort of parameters prefactors okay um, so going back to what I mentioned earlier, that the explicit SUSY breaking of the S tilde models, um, where S tilde doesn't allow for the bosonic counterpart of the um, the 16, the fermionic 16, um, to arise in the massless spectrum, has this implication that we we found for the Patti Salam subgroup, where the um, the Higgs that you need to break the Patti Salam group down to the standard model. And doesn't can, do, cannot be found. There are no suitable scalars in the model at all that you can find. There's no higher level catch moody um, representations you can use in in the free fermionic language um, in in these models to break that that Patti Salam group down. Which means there would be no missing partner mechanism, which is part of having reasonable Patti Salam um, breaking and um, and so this was a sort of hot, a bit of a hole in the analysis uh, that you get with S tilde models, like an interesting contrast that you don't get for the S, S tilde S, the S models. Um, so in particular, it might this might be a I mean similar results have been been talked about in the literature in different cases before. Um, so all, this seems to relate to the difference between having explicit breaking and um, spontaneous breaking of supersymmetry. 
but uh, we do find that um, in the case of a standard-like subgroup of SO10, where you just have this extra U1 factor, that U1 factor can be broken by scalars appearing in the exotics um, for free fermionic models. So this is um, possibly the only viable uh, subgroup that we that we can use. Um, but uh, okay, so that that was just um, just a interesting note that we found in the in, the, in doing the the classification. Okay, so finally, I'll just talk about these interesting extreme configurations, the type zero and type zero bar um, models that we found. So we looked again in these at these four dimensional SNS tilde models. Um, so type zero models have been talked about um, for in many places in the in the literature. Um, so this is where the massless fermions uh, are all projected. Um, and in this recent paper, we proved their existence in the space of Z2 cross Z2 orbifolds for S and S tilde type, um, type models. So um, all of these type zero models seem to come with physical tachyons. But remember our formalism is only defined at this uh, symmetric point in the moduli space. And uh, in this paper by uh, Farrakis and John Rizos, for example, they show how a theory can be perturbed away from the free fermionic point to a, a generic point in the moduli space and the um, and, and tachyon free configurations may be found away from uh, away from the free fermionic point so perhaps these type zero configurations um, will be will, will also uh, follow that pattern um, and also there seems to be like many suggested applications um, for these type zero models. So on the surface, they are sort of fairly unphysical, but it's interesting to know the extremes of what, what possible spectrum, a mass spectrum you can get. Um, so there, there's possible interesting applications, perhaps to early universe cosmology or, um, um, and, and, and yeah, I'll talk about something right at the end as well. So first of all, let's just um, go through how we, constructed the type zero models. Um, so we took a, a fairly simple, simplified minimal basis um, where we had S tilde and then um, the B1, B2, B3, which implement the, 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 the orbifold twists. Um, and then these two extra vectors for allowing us to um, uh, do more GSO projections. So this um, allowed us to look for conditions on the projection of all massless fermionic sectors. And it, we found that if we fix the following GSO phases, we would find a single unique model that was type zero. Uh, in particular, there's a redundancy in the uh, GSO phases and that actually we found um, 4,994, so uh, two to the 12 possible versions, but they, they all correspond to the same model. So the same partition function given here. Um, so you notice there's a, a 16 uh, tachyonic um, states at this mass level um, and a highly positive constant term relating to the fact that there's no, no uh, fermionic states. And we found many more type zero models when we generalized this basis um, slightly as well. And then we also studied the misaligned supersymmetry in this class of models. Okay, so finally, um, we just put a note about, so we're currently writing a, a letter about type zero bar models, which are just the counterpart of these, where you find models where there's no twisted massless bosons. Um, so in both the S and S tilde constructions, we can find such models, which are tachyon free. They also seem to necessarily gain uh, maximal gauge group enhancements. Um, and uh, the spinoral 16 sectors seem to be absent in all cases. Um, but because of the large abundance of massless fermions, we expect a positive cosmological constant, perhaps um, have interesting applications to De Sitter, um cosmology. Okay, so just to conclude then, hopefully we've argued that, uh, I've argued that uh, the tachyonic 10-dimensional string could be a viable starting point for string phenomenology. Um, in particular, we found with the standard-like um, subgroup of SO10 and with asymmetric orbifolding, we can create very interesting constructions. Um, 
We also looked at the tools for analyzing the cosmological constant and the um, requirement of MV equals NF at the massless level. Uh, we also looked at these two extremes in the spring, string spectrum, um, type zero and type zero bar, which could, which uh, further work needs to be done into what applications they might have. Um, but uh, there was um, an interesting paper a couple of weeks ago by Justin Kaidi about the broader review of these type zero, these sort of rogue string theories, the tachyonic and the type zero models and how they might link into the wider duality web of string theory. And there was also some work, uh, so these papers um, by uh, Hellerman and, so the references are here, Hellerman and Swanson in, in the 2007, 2008, where they, they found some, um, so they did some work on how tachyonic condensation can be used to connect these um, uh, tachyonic or type zero strings to um, uh, or more well-known string theories in other dimensions. Okay, um, so thanks again to John and Cody, um, and uh, feel free to ask any questions. All right, thank you, Benjamin, for the very nice talk. Let's all thank Benjamin with our clap emoji. Um, let, let me ask the, the first question, and, and sorry if you already answered this, my connection was a little bit bad uh, this morning, so you, you may have already said this, but um, what, what was the general scale of supersymmetry breaking and, and the CC in these models? Yeah, so a bit of further work needs to be done on the S, S models to understand how, so typically like to understand the spontaneous breaking here, you need to translate into the orbifold language a little bit more. So you see, so what, so what would happen is um, you, you could relate this S, S type models to, um, to an orbifold where you, you, you obviously have some, some freely acting um, shift on the internal coordinates so that um, the gravity gravitino gains some mass term so you you'd have this uh, sort of you you could implement like jerk schwartz um type breaking or and so this was actually done in this um, paper i mentioned by by Rizos and Farakis, um here where they they, they explicitly translated some so 10 models uh, into the orbifold language and talked about how mm. they would be how how the um, how the orbifold actions would look um, to give you spontaneous jerk Schwartz type Suzy breaking, so that uh, yeah the, the string scale basically you you could find in the in the decompactification limit you you'd find that Suzy was restored in um, some parts of the moduli space and you'd have all those nice features of spontaneous breaking mm -hmm. um, in in the S tilde case well. It's, I mean, it's explicitly broken at the string scale. So, um, yeah, there, there isn't that. I mean, the, the gravitini, the gravitini are just projected out completely. So they're not, they're not, um, they're not massive. I don't know if that answers your question, but. Yeah, um, it, it does. Thanks a lot, Benjamin. Um, all right. Our next question is from Saul. Uh, hi, Benjamin. Thanks for this very nice talk. I have a question regarding uh, comparison with old models. Um, there are works by Keith Dines, for example, very old models, I think, in the heterotic string compactifications in the bosonic formulations, and also recently, like 2014, and there were a bunch of models uh, having the standard model gauge group and no tachyons. My question is, how do you compare your models to those uh, previous results? Yeah, I, I think the ones in 2014 uh, with Steve Abel, these, so these are done by looking at a six dimensional um, Susie. No, no, what I mean is a group Nibelink at all. I mean, there were like a, a bunch of standard model like models coming from theoretical orbifolds. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm less familiar with the, 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 uh, like the orbifold ones. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I mean, the, there's there's a direct dictionary between the free fermionic language and the orbifold language. So that you know, um, there, so there's a paper by um, Nibelink and uh, Panos Anastopoulos and Alon Faraji, and where they translate the two. So uh, the the two things can be related. I mean, you know, you have to relate the basis vector to the the so like um, some of the basis vectors correspond, like B1, B2, B3 will implement the orbifold action, for example, and the E's will be like uh, Wilson lines, and you, you, you do the translation, and then I, I think you'd be able to easily map these two 
um, analyses together. And you could get a no tachyon on symbolic scenarios, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, yeah, and also I guess, it, yeah, what I said about how you, obviously in the Orbifold language, you have more control, you can include the, the moduli explicitly and um, do that analysis. So that's why this paper, um, uh, Fracas and Rizos do that, because they can then, by translating into the Orbifold language, you can move around the moduli space and um, project tachyons that way. So, so yeah, so that, that's like the part of our formalism that we're fixed in the moduli space. But apart from that, you know, you could do that translation, yeah. Okay, thank you. And our next question is from Fabian. Hey, um, I have a question concerning this point. So recently there was a paper, and I think you even had it in, in the list like last week or so where they, use tachyon condensation for the non supersymmetric strings to get new consistent tachyon free string theories in lower dimensions by essentially con condensing tachyons and giving mass terms to, to uh, CFT fields. Mm -hmm. um, so, wouldn't this, would, so wouldn't the answer be to the question that whether you can write down these, um, um, these, these string theories just be yes? I mean, the yeah, work, yeah. I think the work of Florakis and others. Mm. And also, um, I understand that this sort of is tailored or that you looked at the free from ionic um, construction, but could you easily extend this to look at um, boundary conditions for these, um, for these tachyon condensated string theories in six, seven, and nine dimensions, which were found? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's. Yeah, I mean, there was that, yeah, the Justin Kaidi paper was, I, I, I hadn't really read much about tachyon condensation until I saw that paper, but, but yeah, so, um, I mean, there's already the sort of tools to do like interpolations between dimensions. So, um, um, yes, yeah, to look at the partition functions in different dimensions and interpolate and take SUSY configurations, non-SUSY tachyonic configurations and translate between them. So the, that that technology is there. Like um, Alon had a paper with uh, Sulayi in 2009, um, where they did some of these interpolations for non-SUSY free fermionic models. You have to translate to bosonic coordinates, and then and then um, and then yeah, look in different limits, the compactification limits, and so it's so all the tools are there to do that. And I think that will be future work. Yeah. Uh, it seems like an interesting direction, particularly looking in two dimensions. Um, yeah. Then if that if that answered what you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, Kaidi wrote that he essentially found the um, like the true vacuum for all known tachyonic string theories. In, in this yeah, paper. So I think that was like. A... If it's easy for you to analyze all of these, might be interesting. Yeah. I, I... Yeah, like he, I think it was a bit. Um, it seemed like a bit of a con conjecture, but there's there's known examples. I think this this Hellman and Swanson they proved a um, you know very concretely some connection between a ten dimensional type zero uh, string oriented string and um, a, I think a two dimensional oh like they're like a a, a more familiar like bizarre, I think it was just like bosonic string theory or something. I, I'd have to check, but the, these papers have some concrete way of doing it. Um, and Kaidi does similar analysis, but it's definitely an interesting like um, idea and direction. I need to look into more. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. If there are no further questions, let's thank Benjamin again.